Auto guiding introduction. My name is Dr. Gaston Bouda from Innovations Foresight. In astrophotography, we usually have to keep a target still for minutes, half an hour or even longer, and that may be a challenge. Tracking errors below an arc second, just a fraction, may lead to elongated star and poor quality image. Therefore, eventually, some type of photo guiding is required. Astrophotography setup is at least a scope, some kind of imaging camera like this one, or a DSLR, this one is a specialized camera for that, and some kind of mount to support the scope for the tracking. Now, despite the quality of your equipment and your mount, eventually after a few minutes, you will have to guide. The main reasons for that are coming from a different range of possible issues. You have to keep in mind the optical axis of your telescope and all the optical train behind it, including the camera, must stay still and very accurately tracking the target. And when I say very accurate, I mean it. A fraction of an hexagon translated in the mechanical world in microns. 100 to 50 microns is the thickness of a human hair. So you don't even need that to have a problem. So high-end mounts with the right software to modelize the mounts and the flexure and also the refraction of the atmosphere can provide you a few minutes without any guiding. But eventually, you will have to do some type of guiding. Most of the cases, you will have to guide every minute, half a minute, or sometime every few seconds. So there are different technologies out there to allow you to do that. They all use a second camera, a guiding camera, or a guider. In some applications, the guiding camera is inside the main camera because that camera, like this one, has two chips. One for imaging, the big chip, and one for guiding a smaller chip of axis. One solution for auto guiding is the guide scope. That's a very common solution to begin. The guide scope is another scope which is somewhere attached to the main scope. He has a guider, a guiding camera on its back like this one, small camera, and the camera will look at a guide star, sometimes more than one star. There is a software typically on a PC who is going to take the image of the guide star and process them to detect any possible motion. Centroid technology is very accurate to detect variation way below a pixel size. If there is any type of drift, then the software will send the correction information to the mount like this one through different ways, a cable or through USB, whatever it takes. Guide scopes are nice because they have shorter focal lengths than the main scope, typically. If you have a scope of 2 meter focal lengths, 10 inch or above, this one is typically way less, somewhere like a half meter or less. Gives you a pretty large field of view to find a guide star. However, there are some drawbacks with guide scope. The main one is the guide scope is yet another scope attached to your main scope. Now you have two optical systems who must stay still all the time with a fraction of an hexagon. That's translate to microns. It doesn't do any good if the image from the guider are still, but there is any differential flexure with the imaging. You will be perfectly aligned with the guide scope, yet you will have elongated star on your imager. Differential flexure is a plague for guide scope. It's very easy to get. It's a function where you are in the sky, what type of target, many things like that. So that's one of the difficulties. Another limitation of guide scope, which is not as well known as differential flexure, is the aperture. A guide star is a point source. Therefore, the light coming from a guide star is a plane wave. And the amount of energy you get at the sensor side, which translates in SNR, and 
limit magnitude for tracking is all about the square of the aperture. Guide scope aperture typically has way less the main scope by a factor 10 or more, meaning your guide star limit magnitude will be less with a guide scope than it could be if you would be able to use your main scope. A better solution is an off-axis guider, which uses the same scope for imaging and guiding. It's placed between your scope and your imaging camera. In this configuration with an off-axis guider, the light comes from your scope, goes straight on axis to your imaging camera. And there is a small prism you can see here, who will pick some light off-axis to send to the guiding camera, the guider, which is at 90 degrees above the optical axis. With this design, the light for the guide star come from a field of view, like a donut shape, off axis of the main scope, off axis of the imaging camera as well. This way you don't cast any shadow on your main chip. However, the main issue is this system is you have to find a guide star in this narrow band donut shape field of view. The main advantage though with an off-axis guider, it's used the same scope. There is no such thing as differential flexure, unless of course the off-axis guider is poorly made. At the end with an off-axis guider, your setup will look like this. Your main scope, the off-axis guider, the imaging camera, the guiding camera at 90 degrees on top of it. And there is typically a mechanism such you can adjust the focus of the guider because both cameras must be in focus the same way since you share the same optical train. Now to find a guide star of axis on this donut shaped field of view, you have to rotate the whole equipment, which has its own set of problems because you may have focus issue when you do that. And of course, for sure, you have to do your flat frame again. There is yet a better solution for auto-guiding. It's known as a non-axis guider, which is a patent pending technology from Innovations for Sight. The on-axis guider, or ONAG, which is a trademark, takes the light from your scope. You share the same optical system that you had with an off-axis guider, but it's a beam splitter. And the visible part of the light will be sent to your imaging camera on top and the near-infrared to your guider on the back. Inside, there is a dichroing beam splitter. It doesn't split the light by energy like 50-50, but by wavelengths. From 370 to 710 nanometer, the visible light is reflected to the imaging camera on top. The on-axis guider offers interesting features. First, you use the same scope for imaging and guiding. Therefore, there is no differential flexure. Then, to search for a guide star, you use the stage on the back and move the guider, X and Y, anywhere on or off axis. It, in fact, is an on-off axis guider. We name it an axis guider, but in reality, it does both, off and on axis, from a guider standpoint. This way, you don't have to rotate anything. You can reuse your flat frames. There is no change for the imaging camera, no focus shift, nothing like that when you search for a guide star. You have a very large field of view, like you would have with a guide scope, with a large aperture, which is your main scope, which increases the limited magnitude for the guide star. 